of time for questions and just kind of continue a dialogue here. These are all, see all the prints together. So all that was done in two week or so uh, stint. Right. Um, really get a sense of how it works. And uh, I might start off with just asking Leslie, I know you've worked with other workshops as well. Um, talk a little bit maybe about the difference between different collaborators, or do you, you know, as an artist, do you look at certain shops for certain things? I look for a bond between me and the printmaker. I look for someone who has good eye. Sometimes you don't know that until you work with them, even though you know, you've seen good work that they've done. You know, honestly, actually, you really don't know it until you've worked with them. And then you work together, and it's, it's very, we have a very easy relationship, but, but very, very alert, very alert. And the other um, presses that I've worked with, it's the same thing. Is that there's a, some kind of connection around what is the new idea, because it's always a new idea. Even if it starts off as potentially a drawing in my studio in Brooklyn, but the skeleton doorly came about completely from being at Tamron. You know, and fooling around with all these colors. I hate it. That was the extra credit piece. <laughs> or you know, I guess that was his first extra credit. Yeah. And yeah, so it's that. It's that resonance. And then for you, Bill, um, working with artists, and even some of the artists here, it's been multiple times you find that there's a change from, say, the, the first time you work with an artist to then they come back again years later. Yeah, I mean, it's always nice to have the artist come back. I mean, the first time you work with them, you know, you, it's like being on the first date, you know. It's, it's kind of a little awkward and kind of, you know. But then the second time, you know, you know each other a little bit better and the ideas maybe flow between you two a little bit easier. And, and you know, usually, you know, it, it's, I like having the artist come back. I don't like just the one night stand kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to open it up. Any questions? It is a relationship. So, as artists working alone, you're the dominant, you are the one making decisions. How do you go back and forth? Uh, is there a tension? situation is different. I worked one time with, um, uh, her name is Georgia Marsh, and again, it, it, everything just kind of worked, you know, and it doesn't always work. It doesn't. No. And so, you know, you can't hit a home run every time, you know, but when you do, it's, it's just something special, and the project turned out really great, and she sent me this really nice, nice note, and uh, she said it was like, um, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, you know, it's, it's nice. sometimes very interesting that what the printers or the artists were, oh, I like this one, but let's only do 10, it's not that exciting. That would be the one that would sell out and resonate with the public really fast. Mm -hmm. So sometimes what the printer and the artist might, sometimes I would see the, them getting really into the process and really liking the print because it was a certain challenge. But that doesn't necessarily mean the public sees that in the finished product. Or, um, so sometimes a very simple, 
just like this. Maybe we'll talk a little more about personal All right, success. Personal connection with the artist. Yeah. yeah. Any questions uh, about Cameron? And uh, I know she used like uh, the plastic plate. You still use the stone too? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, we use. We work off of stones. We work off aluminum plates. Uh, that the artists can work on directly, and we also, the other element is, is uh, also aluminum plates, but they're photo plates, where you draw on a piece of uh, mylar or frosted mylar, and you, and you, you shoot that image onto the plate. Uh, I just wondered, you know, they kind of embrace the technologies and changes in that, and, but how far off is digital? Going like you know, straight from computer to printing on the paper or something like that. I mean, I know that's not what Tamron's about, but I mean, you know, that's the easiest. You use the laser cutter. To right. Do the, I mean, I just wonder what, how, how do you deal with like technology and the ease of that compared to like, you know, well, I, it's a good question. I think um, as long as the, the print is represented correctly. You know, if they don't try and sell that print, if they tell you it's a digital print or a sheet clay print, you know, I have no problem with that. You know, as long as the public knows what they're buying. It's when they, you know, they they make it sound like it's something that's not. That's, that's where I have a problem. So, you know, from being a printmaker, you could, you could tell what a digital print looks like. I mean, it has a certain look to it. And it doesn't have the... Mm, richness, maybe, of how the ink sits on a print that was either printed from stone or clay. It just has a different look to it. And so maybe, the, uh, you know, the public might not see that difference. But when you start getting involved in, in collecting prints, you know, you will start to notice that kind of difference and, and what makes one thing one and one the other. And I agree with that. I mean, there's just that human medieval quality of a human being and a press and ink and paper, and you can just feel the energy of that. Yeah, you there, and then we'll go to you next. Um, I was just wondering, I noticed you use a lot of words in your work, and I was wondering if you use words. Do you find that process is you think of a word and then the image comes, or you have an image and then you think of a word, or is it both? Or that is an excellent question I've been grappling with my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, um, when I go looking for words for, for work, I get ready. I have the books, because I'm a word thief. It's not my, I'm not a writer. I, I collect other people's words. Let's just say what it is. So I put out the books of the writers that I'm interested in, and they're all dead except for one guy. And I make Tom Slay sign a piece of paper like twice a year. I, Tom Slay, do allow Leslie Dill to cut, ruin, mash, smash, and do whatever she wants to my words. Love Tom. And so I make him do another one. Just so that's just what you know. My feeling of, of actually reverence towards um, the, this process. So I take a deep breath and I usually spend two days and I think I go into something of a trance because I turn each page like that. Of, even though I know already what I'm, I'm looking for and I already know what author. And I just wait. And then the words that are sort of pop out in. Where they emerge like an electric blue light. And um, you can want to give me some kind of drug after this, I think. But nevertheless, it's what it is the truth. That there's a revelatory feeling to me. And I think there is for all of us. When we read something that hits home, you know, that is a saying, or you read somebody writing or something, and those words are for you, you they bypass your eyes and your mouth, and they land right in, my, right in your heart. So I look for those words. And so to do that, I have to be mentally and physically in a certain position. And then I collect the words, and the words themselves then give rise to the images. Or, so now this is years later, or I'll have the images here. And like now in my studio, I've been, I didn't bring one, I've been making these little textile pet puppets. And so they need language. So now I know that I have to go back 
and, and it's like a mountain of work because I have to get myself, my capacity big enough so that I can get in that place, so I can take those words into my body and then, yeah. I think that's very interesting because the writer, sometimes when you write, you get lost and you go into a trance and you feel yeah. like you're feeling or a character or a spiritual being or whatever it is speaks through you and you're totally you're lost so that when you look for those words, you experience those things. Yeah. That's really interesting. No, that's, and you're right about writers like that because some of my writer friends said, oh, that's you so articulate, you can write. No, I can't. <laughs> and I tried so hard because these are two friends that I really love. I really tried to write. I said, no, my mind is an empty bucket. And I, I did all these tricks. Like I took all my favorite books and I dog the pages and I would look at the quotes and I would try to paraphrase. And then to trick myself so I wouldn't go back, you're going to, okay, you're really going to put me in an institution. So there's a garbage chute in our apartment. So I took these fantastic books and I put them out. So I, would, I haven't even told my husband this. <laughs> he, he doesn't like me to write things out. So, um, but it was a disaster for me mentally. It's like, I, I, it, it was wrong for my mind. It was wrong for my mind. My mind can generate lots of things, but not words. I can recognize, like you can recognize. Like you can recognize art, or I really do think a lot of you are artists. So but when you come here to an exhibit of the quilts and the, Friends, it's like the fact that we can get this recognition and pleasure, pleasure from our eyes is that is a miracle. Let's say again. Uh, you, you talked a little bit about the, uh, creating new text, creating verse in the Bible. Nothing has the richness, the diversity, the blacks, the lusciousness, the diversity of lithography. Mm -hmm. But as a master printer, is there a difference? Do you have a preference of stone to play? Well, it's always nice to print on a off of a stone. Um, I had an artist one time. Um, he had a great quote. He goes, "Working on an aluminum plate versus stone." He said, "Well, drawing on a plate." And he was from Texas, so he had a really thick draw. He goes, "Well, Bill," he says. Throwing out a plate, it's kind of like kissing a dead person. <laughs> I always remember that quote. It's the collage idea. I mean, after to me, a print, the artist has an image and it's printed over and over, but I just can't see Bill cutting out jubilation 90 times. I mean, is that really printing or is that creating new work? It's I was thinking, this, I was thinking, you know, when you get that God, it's more than a God. You work with someone who has a yes, who gives you a yes in their mind that take the project further. So it is really, we're here tonight because of the nature of collaboration to show you that we, we really work together to, despite knowing there's a lot of handwork or, you know, I mean, Bill will say no when he wants to. I forget who I was, I was talking to someone who was Denise or someone here about, they're asking me about what it was like to work at Tamara, and I thought the in my mind is the attitude was always yes before no. So you have to really, it has to be really some big reason not to do something. It was never, so it was assumed we can do it. Uh, okay, we'll do.